Now it's time for On Point, where we speak to experts to delve deeper into the biggest news stories in the spotlight right now. It was a tale of two deeply different fortunes last week for America's tech giants as they posted their respective results for the fourth quarter of last year. Amazon, Apple and Google's parent company Alphabet beat expectations as their profits and earnings soared. Tesla also bested expectations in the final three months of 2021 across basically all of their metrics. However, it was a quarter to forget for Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook recently renamed Meta. It saw its shares tumble more than 20 percent in extended trading last Wednesday after the disappointing earnings. It was so bad that Zuckerberg saw his own personal net worth evaporate to the tune of around 30 billion U.S. dollars in a day. For more on where this leaves the U.S. tech titans as we head deeper into 2022, we connect to Yang jun Sok, professor of economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Good morning, Professor Yang. Good morning. So we have to start with Meta, as that was the company garnering all the headlines last week. So why is Facebook slash Meta being slammed so hard? And do you think this bodes badly for the future of Zuckerberg's corporation? Okay, well, before we start on individual companies, we should comment on how current economic environment affects tech companies in general. Tech company stocks are usually classified as growth stocks. The current profitability of the company may underestimate the future profitability since the company is still growing. But in order to grow, the company needs to invest and expand, and that requires low interest rates. So under the low interest rate, as we had in the last few years, growth stocks, uh, tech stocks uh, do very well, investors assume companies will invest and expand to grow and raise productivity. So we've seen uh, virtually all tech companies grow very quickly. Uh, but if interest rates rise, growth stocks are the first to get hit and it gets hit hard because the Fed and other advanced countries are now expected to raise their interest rates. Investors are re-examining growth stocks and tech companies. Analysts are advising investors to no longer blindly invest in tech companies, but examine individual strengths and weaknesses. Uh, so rising interest rates will hit different firms differently, and that's what we seem to be seeing here. For Facebook, the biggest problem is the slowdown of the growth of new users. Uh, for, in fact, Facebook uh, lost daily users for the first time in its 18-year history. Uh, some analysts uh, suggest that Facebook is now globally saturated and it'll be difficult to add new viewers, uh, new users. Similar effects were seen with Net stock, uh, Netflix stock uh, earlier in January uh, when it lost more than 20 percent of its value as well. Uh, market reaction is in some sense understandable. Uh, new, uh, the uh, Facebook, Netflix, uh, they seem to be slowing down. But uh, you have to wonder whether the investors thought that Facebook numbers could grow forever. Uh, Facebook has 1.9 billion daily users, and that's nearly the quarter of global population. So, uh, it had to slow down eventually, um, and the uh, slowdown in membership should have been expected. Uh, but Facebook also has other problems due to uh, the spread of false information during the U.S. presidential elections and coronavirus pandemic. Facebook has been facing pu uh, public and political scrutiny, and because of its sheer size, it has been facing antitrust uh, scrutiny from antitrust authorities in U.S. and EU. In fact, one reason why Facebook cha uh, changed its name uh, to Meta was to de-emphasize Facebook, emphasize other companies within it, it, their uh, portfolio, and try to give an impression that they're heading into a new technological frontier, Metaverse, even though no one, exact, uh, no one seems to be completely sure what the Metaverse is. Uh, so uh, they're trying to get away from these problems, but Facebook by itself may be hitting a peak. Right. Well, it seems very much like uh, clear to everyone, including Mark Zuckerberg, that there aren't these new users coming into Facebook, which is probably part of the reason why he rebranded to uh, uh, Meta and tried to get into the metaverse space, metaverse space. Uh, but do you think the company executives there might be wondering now whether uh, Zuckerberg is a little bit past his sell-by date? And do you think it really is too harsh to lay the blame squarely at his feet for the way the company is generally performing right now? 
Well, the fundamental problem for Facebook is that it's, uh, it's so big that uh, it, can, it pretty much hit its limits. Uh, now, Mark Zuckerberg personally has not made the uh, problem uh, any easier to solve because he's faced criticism on false information on uh, Facebook and monopoly problems. Uh, Zuckerberg has failed to fully address the uh, uh, criticism or be very active in fixing the issue. So it may be harsh, but ousting Zuckerberg may be a fairly easy way to calm the critics of Facebook, but if Mita is to uh, go ahead and go into other areas, uh, they need a strong leader, and it's not clear there is a strong leader who can replace Zuckerberg. And Professor Yang, besides Mita, most of the big U.S. tech firms posted very good to excellent fourth quarter reports, and out of the big guns we've mentioned, Amazon, Apple, Google, and Tesla, which are best position to keep success rolling throughout this year as well? Well, Amazon uh, should have lost some value. And, uh, during the fourth quarter, uh, Amazon act, uh, did have gains in sales, but it uh, was only 9.4%, which is the first single-digit growth that Amazon had since 2017. But they did have big profits from an investment in an electric vehicle maker, Rivian, uh, whose stocks Amazon got during an IPO in November. Uh, so because of that, uh, Amazon was uh, had a, a very strong fourth quarter earning, and that more than and the uh, growth from sales was responsible for the rise in value of Amazon. So they're uh, somewhat of a special case. Tesla is riding on the wave of environmental consciousness in Europe and U.S. Uh, as the uh, car drivers are accelerating switchovers to electric vehicles. And the demand for electric vehicles is continuing to rise. And Tesla seems to be less affected by semiconductor out shortfall than other companies. It also helps that uh, Tesla makes a lot of its own batteries for their electric vehicles. Uh, so they seem to be fit in a fairly good position, but Tesla is having some growth problems as they increase production. Uh, some of their quality controls have been uh, uh, having some problems in 2021. Uh, but Tesla, because of the increasing demand for electric vehicles, are probably going to do well. Alphabet, which owns Apple, uh, excuse me, Alphabet, which owns Google, has been doing well in part because uh, Apple's new operating system has stronger protection against tracking, which leads to more ads being viewed on Google and less ads being viewed on Facebook, which accounted for part of that Facebook loss. And perhaps more importantly, Alphabet has announced 20 to 1 stock split to take place in July, which tends to drive up the prices of tech stocks as it did it for Apple in 2015 and 2020. Okay, wonderful, Professor Yang. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but we're grateful for your insights as always, and thank you for joining us. Thank you.